Good morning and welcome to Saturday morning prayer. As I just explained to Sister Jan, I said, good morning, Sister Jan, and what a glorious day we are having in the South Lakes. It's every gardener's delight. Dull, drizzling with rain, and warm. So I pray that wherever you are, the weather is kind to you. And good morning, Sister Jan. And good morning, dear Sister Barbara in sunny Sweden. And Borreda, Sister Pam. And yes, blessings from the Teo community to all at Peace Mala. And good morning, Sister Karina. And it was lovely to see that you finally made the Irish soda bread and that you were kind enough to share a piece with us all electronically. It was really good. So let us be still as we come into the presence of... Oh, and good morning, Brother Jean-Marie. Lovely to have you with us, Jean. And I pray your daughter Genevieve is making progress. Let us be still. Let us be still. And this morning, I've already lit my candle. And if you have a candle handy, why not light it with mine? I dedicate my prayers this morning for all the many blessings that we all receive from God and that we give thanks for our abundance from God's hand, for the joys, the sorrows, the heartache, the disappointments, the challenges, and whatever this day will bring to us, we give thanks to God. And we pray for you. Amen. And now we play the lovely bells from St. Mary's Abbey in Waterford. <laughs> First prayer of the day from the Little Book of Celtic Prayers and Reflections by Jenny Childs. In the garden, Lord, I see images of my life, a tightly closed rosebud, insular and solitary, not yet open to the sunshine of your love. A petaled rose gently opening, bedecked with dewdrops, your tears for my hard heartedness. A rose in full bloom, revealing the glorious potential of a life completely open to you. Lord, help me to be a summer rose, blossoming to your glory. Wow, that was a beautiful prayer. And coming from the Book of Peace prayers, I was guided to share this. Dear God, give us the strength to be more righteous, to see all human beings as equals, and to respect them 
all as part of your loving family. Amen. Just excuse me. Thank you. And now for our hymn this morning. From Hymns for Living. Hymn number 232. The Spacious Firmament by Joseph Addison, born in 1672. The spacious firmament on high, with all the blue eth ethereal sky, and spangled heavens a shining frame, their great original proclaim. The unwearied sun from day to day doth his creator's power display and publishes to every land the work of an almighty hand. Soon as the evening shades prevail, the moon takes up the wondrous tale, and nightly to the listening earth repeats the story of her birth. Whilst all the stars that round her burn and all the planets in their turn Confirm the tidings as they roll and spread the people from pole to pole. What though in solemn silence all move round the dark terrestrial ball? What though nor real voice nor sound amidst their radiance orbs be found? In reason's ear they all rejoice and utter forth a glorious voice, forever singing as they shine, the hand that made us is divine. Ah, oh. thank you, Holy Spirit. And our first reflection this morning from the late Father Henry J. M. Neuven, excuse me, from the his lovely book, You Are the Beloved. God doesn't get burned out. Right. Exhaustion, burnout, and depression are not signs that you are doing God's will. God is gentle and loving. God desires to give you a deep sense of safety in God's love. Once you have allowed yourself to experience that love fully, you will be better able to discern who you are being sent to do in God's name. Have you ever had burnout? I remember having burnout in 1979 when I was a senior charge nurse running a very busy acute medical ward where we had very little staff and the Labour government called on a strike. We had no bedding, no food. We were making food on the ward. And that went on for six weeks. And nearly all of us got burnt out. It's not a nice place to be in. But what about spiritual burnout? It does happen. So we have to be on our guard. And hold everything lightly in our hand. Now the next reflection is from In God's Presence. Give honor where it's due. And it's underpinned by Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Do everything to honor God and not man. Each day God gives you an assignment. This assignment is to bring glory to the name of God. When you know your daily assignment, you'll realize 
that it's not about you, but it's about how God will work through you. When you're a willing vessel, God will use you in ways that seem impossible to man. There is nothing that God can't accomplish through you. Nothing. You just have to keep your eyes focused on Jesus, trust his timing, be patient, and always give him the praise that is due his name. Your destiny has everything to do with the way you allow God to use you for his glory. Trust God through the process and remain humble when God begins to move on your behalf. Give honor where it's due. And that was the theme of our morning prayer after lighting the candle, that we give thanks, blessings to God for all that we've received or will receive. Whether those blessings are the gift of discernment, the gift of prophecy, the gift of being able to care with empathy and love, maybe challenges, health issues, disappointments, rejection. We give thanks to God for everything that we receive. The good news and the bad news. Amen. And from our dear brother Rumi, a truly amazing poet. And this is what I was given to share. This body is a guest house. Wow. Each morning someone new arrives. Welcome them all, for they may be messengers from the invisible. Do not feel burdened by them, or they may go back to non-existence. Each time a thought enters your heart, Treat it as an honored guest. Your worth is shown by the thoughts you entertain. Embrace sorrowful thoughts, for they sweep the house of your heart clean. Scatter the withered leaves and pull out the twisted roots, preparing the ground for the new shoots of joy. What sorrows takes away from the heart, it replaces with something better. Without the fury of thunder and lightning, the plants will be scorched by the sun. Be grateful for all you receive, good and bad alike, for it may be a gift from the treasury of spirit that will bring the fulfillment of your most secret desire. How beautiful. But I do like the analogy. This body of ours is a guest house. A guest house for God. Wow. And finally, from the little book of wisdom, by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. I know I've read them over and over and over, and the book is falling apart, but I like his words because they're succinct, they're short and sweet, and easy to remember. <clears throat> On real love, he shares this, real love is not based on attachment, and love does not discriminate. The kind of love we advocate is the love you can have even for someone who has done harm to you. This kind of love is to be extended to all living beings and it can be extended to all living beings. Amen.
Right. A lot of wonderful reflections there to touch the heart and hopefully bring the soul back into alignment and allow you sense the peace and the love of a God who loves you. Let us bless our Savior, who by his rising to new life has freed the world from fear. Lord Jesus, we offer you our prayer this morning. Take to yourself our cares, our hopes and our needs. Christ, our loving Lord, in your kindness, be with the sick and the poor, the weak and the dying. Bring them your comfort. Lord Jesus, we pray that through our troubles, we may learn to feel the sufferings of others. Help us to show them your love and compassion. In the 
silence of our hearts, we commend our day to God. And now let us just be still and be that guest house for God and welcome those whom the Lord brings into our life today. <clears throat> Let us call upon the God we love, and I call upon the Lord Christ to come to each one of us this morning and to speak to our hearts privately in the silence and stillness of where you are. So use your gift of free will and call on your God, call on the Lord Christ to come back into your heart. And what are you sensing? Are you not sensing the peace and the love of the Christ, the barefoot Galilean, the physician of your soul? Lord Jesus, you bring to us many blessings every day, blessings we often take for granted. So we dedicate this day to you, thanking you for all of God's blessings. But come, Lord, into our heart and speak to each one of us. Because each one of us, Lord, is unique, created by a loving God as a whole and perfect child of God. So we come in our vulnerability, in our weakness, where we may have failed you, but mostly failed ourselves by biting off more than we can chew, maybe not listening to our heart, where we end up becoming anxious and tense, where we become fretful, where we worry and lose sleep. Lord, help us to bring that balance and harmony back into our life. So that we can see you, sense you, feel you, fall in love with you. Let's visualize now an angel of the Lord coming toward you with a lighted candle. <clears throat> but this is no ordinary candle. This is the light of God that your angel brings from the throne of God. And this light is being given to you And your angel stands before you, smiling. And asks you to open your hands to receive the light of God in the symbol of a lighted candle. 
And the moment you touch it, the moment you receive it, the Christ appears. And as he stands in front of you, he shares these words. I am the light of the world. But now I have given you my light and you too are the light of the world for God. Whatever you do, however small, you are God's light in the world. And whenever you come into prayer, light that special candle and be reminded that it was an angel of high rank who brought this gift to you from God to remind you that you hold the light of God in your heart and that you've become the light of God in the world where God will bring people to you you won't have to go searching God will lead people into your life who will need to sit with you the light of God to come back into their life. And Jesus looks at you again and he says, I am the way. And as he looks into your eyes, he reminds you that you too are the way for God that through your loving heart God speaks to those who are wounded because you are also the way of God for God. And Jesus looks at you again and he tells you and I am the divine truth, and so are you. You represent the divine truth of God. On earth. Be still now. And allow Christ touch you. He just takes his hands and places each hand on each side of your face. You feel the warmth, the gentleness, and the healing touch of those sacred hands. Hold you gently <clears throat> in those hands. And now experience the kiss of God <clears throat> as Christ bows down to kiss your head. And now he takes you in his arms. And he holds you. And in his holding, he's reaffirming that you two incarnated on this earth plane for a purpose. You incarnated as the light of God on earth. A light that is fueled 
and nourished by regular prayer, by discipline, disciplining the mind, the body and the spirit, and fasting. And now, you are receiving the healing touch of the one who calls you his beloved. Every part of you now is receiving the touch of God. Every blood vessel in your body, every tissue, every muscle, every organ and every bone structure, and every painful memory in your memory bank of your subconscious mind is being completely obliterated so that you can focus today on joy. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Be still now. Be still. Be still and know that our God is with us. and ever-living God, <clears throat> strengthen our faith, our hope, and our love. May we do with loving hearts what you ask of us and come to share the life you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine on you and bring you peace. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
And now, as a closing prayer on this Saturday morning, in, in our Franciscan family, and within all Franciscans within the Christian family, Saturdays are special days because they're always dedicated to the Mother of God and the part that she played in our redemption. So we give thanks to Mary, the Mother of God. I'd like to conclude with this beautiful song, The Holy Kadosh by Karen Davies and dedicated to you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with your glory. So now, my dear friends, go in peace to love and serve the God 
of many names who brought you here so that our loving God could touch you and reaffirm that you are the light of God in Christ in the world. So be the joy, the peace, the love, and the truth of God. Amen. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace and the love and the joy of all that is sacred to you bless you, protect you, and keep you safe and well. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and lovely to have our dear friends here on Facebook, dear Sister Barbara with Sister Nini and Sister Jan. And Melbourne, welcome Melbourne. I pray you'll come back again and pray with us. And of course, dear brother Jean-Marie, bless you, and dear sister Pam, of course. Bless you all. Take care. And to our dear friends on YouTube, to our dear sister Karina, with sister Jan, always a blessing to have you with us. And I pray that you have a good day in your allotment, sister Karina, and also sister Jan, you're known for your wonderful plants and vegetables from your polytunnel. I remember last year when you came with the most beautiful hanging baskets. Ah. Oh. And your tomatoes. Wow. Thank you, Jack. God bless.